Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis fighting back against allegations that she benefited from a relationship with her lead prosecutor in the Trump Georgia probe, Nathan Wade, a man who she hired. Now, Willis was subpoenaed to appear in court next week as part of Wade's divorce case. But in a new filing, Fonnie Willis's attorney claims that Wade's estranged wife, quote, conspired with interested parties in the criminal election interference case to use the civil discovery process to annoy, embarrass and oppress Willis. Willis's attorney did not directly acknowledge the allegation, but said, quote, because the parties agree their marriage is ir irretrievably broken, there is no information that Willis could provide that would be relevant. These All right, so here's where we're at. No matter what Fannie and her crew try to pull, and, and you can see now they're trying to infer, and they expect the mushy brains to believe, and unfortunately so many of them do, but they expect them to believe that the information coming to light about their zero experience, highest paid prosecutor in Georgia history, the one that Fannie allegedly is romantically involved with, they want you to believe that these things are only coming to light because this guy's estranged wife is some sort of right-wing MAGA-aligned liar attempting to use the courts to settle some sort of political score, which, of course, nobody would dare do that. Nobody would use the courts to settle political score, right? Anyway, whatever tricks they try to pull, however they try to stall, and they are trying to stall. Fanny's filed a petition to quash the subpoena. That basically, she doesn't even deny the allegations. It just claims that basically she's too important to the government to be bothered by peasant-like subpoenas from some employee's divorce. But anyway, none of this is going to work because the walls are closing in on Fannie Willis more and more every single day. And a couple things are interesting here to me. One, why in the world can't Democrat operatives do anything at all without making it look corrupt? They can't even fake not being corrupt. I mean, they don't even try. It's almost like they truly do not care what we think or what people know about them. They are going to do what they want, when they want, how they want. And you're either going to support it or you are going to be labeled a right wing crazy extremist. The second thing, you know, regular everyday people who are willing and made themselves basically the willing victims to these Democrats for some reason just cannot even question any corruption that doesn't somehow link back to Donald Trump. And it's remarkable stuff, honestly. I mean, it is remarkable. Everyone in the media, every government watchdog group, really every single citizen of Georgia especially those citizens of Georgia should be paying attention to what is going on with Fannie Willis's alleged boyfriend. I mean, it's not just how much this injury attorney turned superstar prosecutor is billing the citizens of Georgia. It's how. I mean, the guy has billed them for whole 24-hour periods. He worked from sun up to sundown, didn't go to the bathroom, didn't take a dinner, nothing. And he's billing this and he's getting away with it. And still, not one person really has the appetite to pay attention to this fraud. Fannie Willis's lover boy, Nathan Wade, might be the hardest working lawyer in America. Nathan allegedly billed taxpayers for 24 hours of work on the Trump Georgia case in a single day. That means Nathan was working all day and all night on Fannie's case. What would lover boy be working on past midnight? He wouldn't be billing Fannie no, he couldn't be. I'm sure he was just burning the midnight oil at the office. Lover boys build nearly 700 grand. Is he making more than the lawyers who aren't sleeping with Fannie? Is he making more because he's more qualified than they are? Or is the lover just working harder? Let's ask Fannie. I appointed three special counsel as is my right to do. Paid them all the same hourly rate. They only attack one. False, Fanny, we have the docs. You're paying lover boy a half a million more than the other prosecutors, and he's billing $100 more an hour. So what are the lover boy's credentials anyway? God, wasn't it them that attacked this lawyer of impeccable credentials? Is it that some will never see a black man as qualified, no matter his achievements? What more can one achieve? Well, the race card isn't going to get you out of this one, Fanny. We found lover boy's resume. Impeccable? Not a word I'd use to describe Nathan Wade's credentials. Some of his highest profile cases involve car accidents. Loverboy represented a lady who was rear-ended by a beer truck. 
He tried getting her 300 grand for emotional and physical damages, but the case was dismissed. Loverboy is a piranha in small claims court. He represented an electronics store who claimed the customer owed him 11 grand for some speakers. Wade won that one. And his biggest court victory of all time, Nathan Wade helped two people get their names changed. But Nathan does his best work with paternity cases. If you are not the father, you call 1-800-LOVERBOY, and your child support payments will disappear faster than Hunter's. Loverboy is like the black Ken Starr with a gun, although he doesn't have Ken Starr's ethics. We just found out Nathan Wade admitted to destroying documents in a previous case. So maybe Fanny's right. Maybe her lover is perfectly qualified for the Trump case. All right, so here's what I see, man. Fanny Willis, she's been from the beginning obsessed with orange man bad, get Trump, get Trump, get Trump at all costs. She wanted this. You know, she wanted all eyes on her. She wanted the Michael Avenatti treatment before they turned on him. From the media and from the left, she wanted to use this, and she wants to use this to become governor. So she got it. She got what she wanted. All eyes are on her. Everyone sees what she's doing. And now anyone who can still critically think knows that she is literally robbing the taxpayers of her state blind at a bare minimum. There's a lot more going on, but at least that much we see. And she thinks that those same people are going to be dumb enough to make her governor, which I do believe this is what this is all about. This is a stepping stone. She didn't just do this because she thinks that the laws have been violated. She's done this for herself. And I don't think that Governor Abrams is going to like her coming for her job that much. But anyway, guys, that's just my take. Let me know yours in the comments. And if you haven't already, guys, please be a part of the channel's growth. 2024 is going to be a big year, and we have got to get conservative voices heard. So make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Until then, keep the faith.